I know you're looking for a bargain when it comes to buying land. And you may have heard of you could get a really good deal if you got a piece of land off an auction site. And I know it can be super exciting when you start seeing pieces of land on the internet when it goes up for auction as low as $1,000. But there's gonna be some things you need to know about before you start making those first bids. So today I'm gonna to be talking about the pros and cons of buying auction land. The do's and don'ts of when you buy auction land. Some of the best websites to find auction land. And you're gonna be following these steps with me from all the way to the beginning, all the way to the very, very end when you close. Now I wanna share with you the auction sites that I've had the most success with with my clients and myself in purchasing land. There's a million out there and this is in no particular order. These are just the ones that I've had the most success with in getting a deal closed. And the first one is auction.com. They have several listings on there. They may not have it every single time that you go to look for a piece of land, but you just kind of have to keep an eye on it. And that's the same of all these websites. The next one is hubzoo.com. That's a really funny name, but they have land listings and house listings as well. So you can go through their whole entire website. Then the next one is a website that I didn't really necessarily think it was true when my client came to me and said that they found a piece of land through this website. And then it ended up being a really great deal, which was billyland.com. Don't let the website fool you. It looks a little archaic, but apparently you can get some really good land from there. And the next one is bid for assets.com. I've had a couple people that actually were able to get a piece of land through their website and it did take them some time. It was a little bit longer closing process. Now, like I said, there are other websites that you can look at when it comes to purchasing land and auction sites, but you can also get really good deals at tax sales as well. So always keep that in mind in the back of your head. Land auctions take place all around the United States and can be conducted by governments and private auction houses. You can start your search by visiting a tax collection website. Land auctions are often conducted by the county where the property is located. In addition, you can always check your local newspaper for auction notices in your area. Now, not everybody's gonna be picking up the newspaper when it comes to looking for auctions. They have now been posting those online on their county websites, so just go ahead and check that. If you're in the state of Louisiana, I was called out this before, a county is a parish, so you're gonna check your parish commissioner's website. People are so funny. <laughs> before you even start this process, become really good friends with a title attorney in your area that you're planning on buying. All right, before you start jumping in and deciding that on pieces of land that you want to put in a bid on, you're going to need to find somebody that's on your side, whether that be a real estate agent or a real estate attorney. They're going to be able to help you with the paperwork when you do decide to put in a bid for a piece of land. Since they're familiar with these documents, especially real estate attorneys, they're going to be able to get it done a lot faster than you can on your own. Not only that, if you are working with a real estate agent, they're going to be able to tell you if the value of the property is worth what you're wanting to put a bid on it for. So it might behoove you to get both of those people in your back pocket. And I always say at least interview three real estate agents at minimum to work with the right real estate agent for you. You want to make sure you're working with somebody that is familiar with vacant land and with auction sites. That's two totally separate things when it comes to real estate transactions. You want to make sure they're familiar with both of them. I know you're excited, but attend some of these auctions before you decide to jump on in and start pulling up your paddle. It's great to see things with your eyes and your ears too. This is my best advice I can give you, especially if you're brand new to the whole process of purchasing a piece of land through an auction. Go to several auctions, several different types of auctions and kind of get the vibe of the place. See how the culture of how people are bidding and how much they're going up for. So that way you, you don't get caught up in the rat race of keep going up higher because it can be very addictive. You're like, well, I can put another thousand thousand dollars down and then all of a sudden you're spending three thousand dollars more than you wanted to for a piece of dirt. Not only that you start to get to notice a lot of these people are the same people in all of these auctions and you'd be surprised you can kind of get a feel for what they're doing and who they work for and you learn so much while you're there. <laughs> you learn a lot and you learn the correct way how to bid and how you're not going to be loud and who you're not going to be like because there's always that one that everybody groans at and rolls their eyes. So just go there and observe first. Don't don't jump in blind. That could be a very big mistake. Very costly. If you're not not really good at Google spreadsheets, this is the time to dust off those skills because you're going to want to keep track of all the properties you looked at. Now that you've visited a few auction sites, this is when you're going to want to keep track to when the auctions are about to happen. They're going to put out and publish a new brochure about every week to every two weeks, sometimes only once a month. But you're going to want to keep track of this, especially if you're trying to find a very affordable piece of land. These brochures will contain information about the land and the auction itself. The information will generally include the parcel number, the amount of available land, the specific location of the land, the access points, and the right-of-ways, where you can find the survey only if it's recorded at the courthouse, by the way, the restrictions for the property, and you're going to want to write down any other notes about that specific property. They usually will have a little section if there's some things that you need to know, like if there's timber rights that are being conveyed or anything like that, they'll have that in the little section below that. But keep track of that and put it on a spreadsheet so that way you know exactly what's coming up so you know what you're going to be wanting to bid on. So you've 
visited an auction site and you think you're ready to go, but have you checked the terms and conditions of the auction that you're planning on buying the property for them? Each website has its own set of rules, terms, and conditions. Just because you bought it this way at one specific site, it can be completely different on another site. Make sure you look for their terms and conditions on every single piece of property as well, because that can also differ. Usually the terms and conditions in each and one of the websites will have a layout exactly what you expect if you purchase the land from the auction, what the minimum price bids are, whether there's a reserve on a particular piece of land, meaning that if it doesn't sell for X amount of dollars or the bids are too low, they'll end up pulling it off the website if it doesn't meet that reserve, the type of title that will be conveyed at the time of closing. It will also include when the property taxes are due and how and when you can possess the property and any other conditions of the sale. You're going to want to know all of those terms and conditions before you ever make any kind of bid at any auction site. Now, if you're ever confused about the terms and conditions on any of those websites, that's when you're going to want to call that real estate attorney again and say, hey, look, can you explain this to me? Because I don't get it. Sounds like these uh, terms and conditions are reading like stereo instructions. And that's what you're paying them for, for them to help you understand these things. Just because this piece of property may have been listed on an auction site, that doesn't mean you have the right to go exploring it like your door or the explorer, you're gonna to have to get permission. Now, a lot of times these auction sites do give you a length of time that you can preview the property. If you're not able to walk that piece of property, at least go to the edge of the piece of property and take a good look at it. If it has a survey, you can get a good idea where the meets and bounds are or the corners of the property is. Hey, look right here. If you see one of these on the property, that might be the rope that's showing you where the property line is. And you can see the condition of the other pieces of property around the land that you're thinking about purchasing. Now, in some cases with some auction websites, they do have it listed on the MLS. And you can look online to see if it is listed with a real estate broker. If it is, you can schedule an appointment with one of their buyer's agents to take a tour of that property. In some cases, they'll just tell you to go on over and it was fine. In other cases, they may have you accompanied with a real estate agent from their office to walk the piece of land. You don't want to get arrested for trespassing just because you want to buy a piece of dirt. It'd be a story to tell at Christmas time, but nobody wants you to be arrested. I certainly don't. I'm going to tell you this before you start groaning, so just be prepared. You're going to have to get comparables. You're probably going to need the help of a real estate agent. There go the groans. <laughs> They're gonna be able to tell you how many pieces of land in the area have sold for what amount of money and how long it took them to sell and what the average cost is. And they give you a lot more details of the properties around the property you're about to purchase. Now, during that time when you're doing those comparables, you may wanna ask that real estate agent if this piece of land had ever been listed before. So they can pull up any kind of details about that piece of land that wasn't on the auction website. For example, if the auction website didn't have a survey, but it could be in the MLS as an old listing, not only that, maybe some old property disclosures, you wanna get as much much information on the piece of land that you're purchasing as possible. And real estate agents do have a lot more access to it than real estate attorneys, especially if they're not a part of the MLS. I get this question all the time. If I'm getting financing through a lender, am I still going to be able to make a bid on an auction site? The easy answer is sometimes. Now, just because it's an auction website, that doesn't mean that you can't finance it. When you do look at those terms and conditions on some of these auction websites and even the county websites, they'll let you know if you're allowed to have financing. If you are planning on financing, financing a piece of land, secure that financing way before you ever put in a bid. Even if you're not financing, you may have to put down a down payment. Now, regardless of your financing options, whether you're paying cash or you are getting financing, every auction house is going to require some kind of down payment. So you're going to want to investigate that ahead of time, what kind of down payment they do require once you have placed the bid and once you close the bid. For the love of all that's holy, get title insurance. No matter what your cousin's uncle's brother said about title insurance and it being a complete scam, if you're buying auction property or tax leaned auction property, this is money well spent. One of my first real estate transactions I've ever had in my life was a brand new house and a brand new subdivision where the property line was off by two feet. And part of their driveway and part of their garage was in the neighbor's yard. They didn't know it until the time they went to go sell. That became a big giant nightmare, but not for them because they had title insurance. If you're confused on what title insurance is, make sure you contact that real estate attorney that you hired at the beginning of this process when you decided to buy an auction piece of land. They will explain title insurance to you and I bet you a million to one they're going to tell you you need it. You know how like you schedule something in your calendar and you're like you know for sure it's at 11 o'clock on Tuesday 11 o'clock on Tuesday and you get there and they're like oh we moved it we moved it to Wednesday at two o'clock. So call ahead 
Make sure they haven't changed it so that way you're there and prepared on time. And remember, the early bird gets the worm. And you arrive there, you arrive early, you get yourself a good location, you get surrounded by the good people that you've observed at the other auctions. That way you're prepared and you don't feel overwhelmed. I know I always get like, because I'm one of these people that have to be at the airport three hours early because I don't want to be overwhelmed. If you do this when you go to an auction site, you won't have that overwhelmed feeling, especially if it's the first time that you've ever been to an auction site. Now it's time to make that bid. Yes, let's go. Let's do this. Now, bidding on auctions is kind of a science. And hopefully you've investigated enough time that you've watched the kind of the culture of how people bid. Don't go in there with your max bid right from the get-go. And like I said, you've followed the culture. So you know that most of the time these people don't go up more than like a hundred dollars. So you're going to make your hundred dollar bid up. Just go with the flow because you might even get even less than you thought you would in the first place because maybe they haven't done the investigating on the property like you did. Just be calm, cool, collected and get yourself a great piece of land. So now that you know all this, will you be considering buying a auction piece of property? It's a way to get a really good deal. Just let me know in the comment section below if it's something you're considering for your next piece of property. But if you need more information about buying land that isn't total poop, go ahead and click these videos right here. My name is Christina Smallhorn, your real estate whisperer. And I tell you all this because good real estate information matters.